So let's bring in some CNN political commentators, S.E. Cup and former Clinton White House Press Secretary Joe Lockhart. Uh, Joe, every single vote uh, trickling in here matters. Uh, rest in peace to all of those folks out there who thought their vote doesn't matter. I mean, that, uh, th that claim just doesn't hold up anymore. We're down to potentially single digits maybe in some of these races outstanding. Um, how are Democrats feeling at the moment right now uh, that, they, that they've got in, in Arizona um, and potentially closing the gap here in Nevada? What do you think? Well, I think Democrats are feeling pretty confident right now. Jim, as we talked about leading up to the election, this was an impossible election to model. We didn't know who was going to turn out. Uh, and that's why a lot of the narrative, I think, was wrong. Uh, about predicting this red wave. Uh, the reason Democrats are confident is the voters, it seems, have taken the longer term protecting my rights, protecting democracy, protecting the right uh, to abortion versus the shorter term uh, uh, economic issues like inflation. And as you look forward, that is very good news for Democrats and bad news for Republicans because these issues are going to remain. The Supreme Court has ruled in the Dobbs decision and as long as Trump is around, we're going to be having conversations about democracy. So that's good news right now today as they count the votes. It is trending well for Democrats. But I think even more important, long term, it's good news for Democrats. And I see, I mean, what do you think of that? And also, I mean, let me ask you, uh, there's this new CNN reporting that, uh, according to Republican sources talking to CNN, uh, former President Trump is calling up allies uh, in the Senate, suggesting that uh, Mitch McConnell, the minority leader, is to blame for the Republicans' midterm performance. I was talking to uh, Trump, support, uh, Trump advisors earlier this week about this. I had one advisor saying he was livid and he was, yeah. you know, he was screaming at everybody. And that's been backed up by other folks reporting basically the same thing. He's been on a real sort of tantrum all week long. I mean, what, what do you think's going on? Well, I think he's fuming because he knows he... He knows he's responsible for a lot of the losses, and um, he doesn't like to be attached to failure and losses, and he is, and I think he thought it was going to go a lot better. Um, and he wants to, to place blame elsewhere because, you know, as we know, on Tuesday he wants to announce he might be running for president, um, and he doesn't want this stink sort of um, fuming up the room, but um, the stink isn't washing off. You know, he, he owns these midterm failures, and he knows it. Yeah, Joe, I mean, do you think that helped? I mean, Democrats, uh, you know, I remember we were covering uh, the, the final hours, final days of uh, uh, the midterm race, um, these races across the country last weekend, and there was Donald Trump out on the campaign trail and talking to various folks, and he was talking more about himself than the candidates he was out there supposedly uh, supporting. And I just wonder, at the end of all of this, if folks looked at that and said, you know what, no, I don't want the country to go in that direction. Been there, done that, it didn't work out. Yeah, well, there's no doubt that Trump being on television, Trump being in someone's state energizes Democrats. The, you know, the question in this race was, how much did it energize Republicans as far as turning out? And I think you're seeing in places that the energy it, it provided for Democrats outweighed any uh, benefit that Trump uh, provided. But I would say as a note of caution on Trump that Republicans oppose him and ignore him at their own peril. We have had Trump as down so many times. And when he goes one on one with his fellow Republicans, he always wins. And I think he always wins because there is a Trump voter out there that's a vote that's not a Republican vote. And one of the really interesting questions, and, and again, I don't know that we have any data on it yet, is how many people stay at home because Trump wasn't on the ballot, as opposed to Trump injecting himself into the campaign. So I think this, you know, um, overnight narrative that, you know, Trump is, is going to lose the party, I think it's way too soon and, and premature to, to come to that conclusion. I, I see. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. Um, you know, yes, there's been some consternation, some hand-wringing, some distancing themselves from Trump. Give that about five more minutes, um, and then you will see the Republican Party move steadily back to Trump. And that's because... They have so intentionally um, identified themselves with him. It's not as easy as quitting Trump. You have to be willing to quit all of his voters. Um, and a good number of his voters are QAnon, Proud Boys, um, anti-Semites, you know, uh, racists. Um, not all his voters, but a chunk of them are really um, some, you know, terrible strains of hate um, and bigotry, and Republicans have been all too willing to let those folks creep into the party because they were voting Republican. If you're not willing to say, we don't want your votes, we disavow you, and we don't want you in Congress either, 
uh, then you're just going to keep getting Trumpism on repeat. It might be packaged a little differently. It might look a little different. But Trumpism isn't gone, and I don't see it going away anytime soon. And Joe, let me ask you about, I mean, let's just not talk about the former president. I mean, let's talk about what Democrats, in your view, did right. Um, Gen Z showed up. Uh, women voters showed up, uh, outraged over the Dobbs decision. People showed up because they were worried about democracy. I mean, I talked to voters who said they were worried about the, f the future of American democracy. Uh, voters of color. Um, there was quite a broad coalition that the Democrats put together. Yeah, I, I think so. And as I said before, this really was a forward-looking uh, election and a result as opposed to a snapshot of where we are right now. And I think that turned out young people, that turned out women, that turned out um, uh, minority communities, because these rights are so important to them, and they see rights that are being taken away from them. And that's much more important. And I think there was a lot of um, back and forth on whether uh, President Biden's speeches about democracy um, were helpful to Democrats, and I think there was some skepticism. I think we now see that it helped frame this election. It helped make the Dobbs decision more relevant. It helped make the election denialism more relevant. Uh, and again, these are all things moving forward that work to the Democrats' favor. Essie, do you think uh, Kevin McCarthy is going to be the next Speaker of the House? I mean, I, we have to get through the rest of these races. Right. The votes have to be counted. Uh, the Republicans have the best path forward in terms of landing the majority. But is Kevin McCarthy going to be the next Speaker? Or do you, do yeah. you buy into these stories that, that it's, it's uh, uncertain for him? I think he's going to be Speaker. Yeah. But I think he's going to be speaker for a very short time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the Republican House is a messy place. And um, all it takes is a minority, uh, you know, a slim minority to come against him. And he's got nowhere to go. Uh, you know, I went through this, um, you know, I didn't personally, but I, I covered when John Boehner went through this and the elements in his Republican Party came after him and Paul Ryan, too. And that was like in the good old days. Right. Uh, so I think Kevin McCarthy might um, be careful what he wishes for with this yeah. <laughs> Republican House. We've seen this movie before with yeah. John Boehner, Paul Ryan. It's, that's and, right. And, Joe, let me ask you about, um, about President Biden. Uh, th this past week has been a good week for democracy, decency, and dark Brandon, I think. Um, <laughs> and f forgive me if that reference is going over your head. Uh, <laughs> maybe we're too old to get some of these things from, from the young kids, speaking of the younger voters. But... Um, the speculation about whether or not the president will run again in 2024, I suppose that's going to continue, but, and he keeps giving the same answer about this. Let's play that, and I'll, let me get your comment on the other side. Look, my intention, as I said to begin with, is that I would run again, but it's just an intention. I have not made that formal decision, but it's my intention, my intention to run again. My intention is that I run again, but I'm a great respecter of fate. What do, you, what do you think, Sho? Uh, he, he's routinely underestimated, and now it can boast uh, one of the best uh, performances during a midterms that a Democrat has seen in, in a very long time. Yeah, Jim, uh, without reference to my age or his age, this was a very good week for President <laughs> I'm Biden. I'm sorry. I, I should not have said it <laughs> yeah, that way. So, yeah, so much of, I think, the resistance he was getting was this, this narrative that he was underperforming and couldn't deliver, when in fact he delivered some very big things. And I think, you know, politics is often about um, headwinds versus tailwinds. And he now has some wind behind his back. And, you know, I hope the Democrats are willing to take advantage of it, even in the lame duck and beyond that. But it does. And I think you're right. He is underestimated at every turn. And he tends to over-deliver on that. And, you know, over-delivering and under-promising is a formula and politics that's gold. Essie, I can just see the uh, memes of, of Joe Lockhart right now with the laser beams coming out of his eyes. <laughs> I love it. Dark, dark Joe. Dark, Joe. Dark, dark Lockhart. Dark, dark, dark Lockhart. Listen, I think Biden... Yeah, what do you think? Bi Biden, Biden should, should run if he wants. He has every right, although I, I think he was always going to be a transitional president, not a transformational one. He did the job. Um, he got Trump out. Um, it would be fine if Democrats wanted to move on. The problem is Joe Biden cannot wait much longer. Because every day that passes is another opportunity for folks like you to go to Capitol Hill and interview a Democrat and say, do you think Joe Biden should run? And they say, well, yeah. I don't know. Maybe not. That's bad. That's bad for Joe. It's bad for Democrats. Um, I, would, I would get there. Make the announcement whether you're running or not. And if you're not, let Democrats um, put their bench up and get folks used to that.
All right, SE Cup Joe Lockhart. We're waiting for the memes now. Uh, <laughs> dark Joe Lockhart. All right, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Him. Thanks for the time.